In this next project, we're going to be looking at a core and cavity machining. And our file is actually going to be a parasolid model. So let's go to File and Open and put yourself in the folder that contains the sample files that came with this disk. And I want you to select your file type as a parasolid file. And you should see a parasolid file or an XT file that's called Cover and Core Cavity. Select that and open. So I'm going to right click and switch this to an isometric view and we have what looks like two blocks. Now if we go to our level manager you'll see that we actually have three entities on three different levels and we can turn these on and off. So if I turn off number three you'll see there's a green block and there's a gold colored part sitting on top of it. Now if I click here we could see I turned off the green block and there's nothing left here except the actual part. So if I turn this back on, we see another section of the block. So I'm going to put myself on this level and turn this off. Now another way you can look at this is to go to your shading options up on top, go to your shade settings and turn on translucent. And then you can actually see through the block. So we can see this block has some kind of a cavity in it. If we put ourselves on this level, turn that one off, we can see this one is the core. And of course, we know this one is the actual part. So I'm going to start by renaming these. I'm going to double click in here under the name. And I'll call this Cover Part Solid. And this one we'll call Cover Core Solid. And this one we'll call Color Cavity Solid. So now we know what they are. We can easily turn on or off any individual part. So for now, I'm going to leave it on the Cover Cavity Solid. Now I'm going to want to create some bounding geometry that I can use for my stock box. And I want to number my levels so that they're associated with what we have here. So I'm going to start by creating a stock box for my cavity. And since that was on level 3, I'm going to call this level 13. And I'll call it stock box cavity. So right now, the yellow indicates that that is the active level. And we're going to say OK here. And I'm going to go back to my solids. And I'm going to go to my shade settings. And I'm going to turn off translucent. And now, what I want you to do is just flip this over, and we're going to create a stock box around this. Now, you should select a color that's different from whatever your model is, and we should be on level 13 for our stock box cavity. And we're going to go to Create Bounding Box. And I want to put that box around this entity, so I'll click on the solid, and I'll hit Enter to end my selection and it brings us into the bounding box parameters. So we have manually selected the item that we want to put the box around. We want a rectangular stock shape. And here we already have the size for the rectangular block that we'll be building. Down here we can tell it what we want it to create. Now I only want it to create lines and arcs. I want it to build a wireframe box that represents my stock boundary. Here we have our push-pull functions, and I want it set to incremental so that I can grab the top of this block. Then I get my arrow. I'm going to click on my arrow, and I'm going to slide up. And it doesn't really matter how much you slide up. Once you see the number displayed here, I want you to just key in 0 .05 for 50 thousandths. So that moved that face 50 thousandths up from where it was. Now press enter one more time to finalize it and we've added 50 thousandths to the top face of that block and we're going to OK this. Next we want to create a plane in reference to this geometry and also set our zero for the block. So I'm going to go to WCS, dynamic WCS and there are several ways to do this. We'll use dynamic this time and because I'm 50 thousandths above that corner you'll see a little snap in between those two. 
So you want to make sure you're grabbing the top one. The easiest way is just to do an Alt-Z for your levels, turn off your solid temporarily, and we're going to pick that corner. That keeps me from picking the wrong one. So with that selected, now I'm going to grab the arc, the red arc right here, click on that, and I'm going to move this over, and I want to line it up with the end point at this corner. Next, I want to grab the green shaft, and I want to slide that over and snap to the end point of that same corner. So now we can see we've created an XY plane at that top face. Our Z is pointing up away from that face, and my zero is locked onto that corner. So here I can enter a name for this plane, and I'll say Cavity Machining Plane. Now I want to assign that its own unique work offset. So when I click this to turn on work offset, it gives me the first available work offset. And I could say set that as the current WCS. And we'll OK this. Now when you do that, it sets the WCS to Cavity Machining Plane, but my Tool and Construction Plane is still set to Top. So if you wanted to set all of those, you would go to WCS Plane Manager, and with that plane selected, you would hit Equals, and that makes your Work Coordinate System, your Construction Geometry Plane, and your Tool Machining Plane all equal. Now if I was to OK that and hit Function Key F9, I can see that my zero is on that face. I'm going to hit F9 again to turn that off. I'm going to go to WCS Plane Manager, and I'm just going to set everything back to top for right now. And we'll OK this. Now I'll go back to my Level Manager. I'm going to turn on Level 2, which is my core block, and I'm going to create a new level down here called 12, and I'll call this Stock Box Core and make sure you're on that level, and now we can turn off level 13. And we'll OK this. I'm going to go to a isometric view, and I'm going to do the same thing again. We're going to say Create Bounding Box, select my solid, hit Enter to end my selection. With Push-Pull set to incremental, I'm going to grab the top of my block, select the arrow, and slide up Enter 50 thousandths, and then enter it one more time to finalize it, and OK this. So now we have our wireframe bounding box for our stock. Let's create the plane for this. This time we'll just go to WCS Plane Manager, and I'm going to create this plane by selecting Geometry. I'm going to select the line that represents the X and the line that represents the Y, and we're going to OK that, because that looks like the right one. And we'll call this Core Machining Plane. I'm going to get the next available work offset. I want to set this as my current WCS, and I want to set my origin to this corner. So that's two different ways of doing the same thing, whether you use dynamic or just set all of this inside of the Work Coordinate System Plane Manager. OK this. When you do it this way, it actually comes up with your work coordinate system, your construction geometry plane, and your toolpath tool plane all set active. Now if they weren't active, you would want to set them all to be equal to the currently selected plane. And we'll OK this.